Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about a quick and easy way to import your character creator characters into Unreal. Now that iClone 7 supports PBR, we can achieve the same visual results as all major game engines, which is pretty cool. This is a neat looking thief character that I've created in Character Creator, complete with PBR textures and everything. The first thing we want to do is export it as a clothed character to FBX format from the file menu. Make sure you have Delete Hidden Mesh selected, as that will give you a smaller file and will require less resources in-game. Another advantage of doing this is that since Character Creator supports multiple layers of character dress, you can also use it to hide unwanted inner meshes that may cause penetration issues. You'll also notice there is a specialized option to convert the bone structure to the Unreal 4 rig. We're going to be using the default third-person motions in Unreal, so I'll deselect Include Motion here as well. Once in Unreal, I'll create a separate folder for my character and drop in my FBX file. It's important to get the right import options here. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have Use TOAS as Reference Pose selected. And for Skeleton, choose the Unreal 4 default skeleton. Then choose Import All. Once everything is imported, just double click your imported skeletal mesh. Right away you can see that because we chose the UE4 default skeleton, we already have a blueprint loaded onto the character. And you can see the default third person motions already applied to our imported character. We can also go into animation and see the animations loaded onto our skeletal mesh, such as all the start, loop, and end jumps as well as the idle, the run, and the walk. Let's close this down for now and quickly play our default third person project demo. Here you can see an identical run and idle applied to the default scene model. If you want to swap out for a character creator character, all we need to do is select it from the drop down menu in the mesh section when our character is selected. If I play now you can see our cool looking CC character performing exactly the same animations. Everything looks good to go, so let's just go ahead and select save all. Now because FBX files currently don't carry the necessary texture maps for PBR, we need to manually apply those in Unreal. If I go to my source folder in Explorer, I can type in AO to find all the ambient occlusion related textures in that folder. Then let's select them all and import them all into our Unreal Textures folder. We can do the same thing by searching Metallic, find and select all of those textures and import them in as well. Finally, we'll import in all the roughness textures the same way. Just make sure you don't have any stray textures with the word roughness in them and you should be okay. Okay, so let's open up our first default 08 metallic texture by double clicking. The first thing I want to do is uncheck sRGB because we need to use linear color space to show the correct PBR color result. Load in the roughness texture to do the same thing for that. Then we want to load in the material itself and you'll see the material graph appear. What we want to do now is make sure the roughness, AO, and metallic textures are piped into the right nodes of our material. So we'll click and drag in all of those. Make sure that the blend mode is set to masked and then we can pipe in all of our maps to their respective nodes. Once that's done, pipe the old opacity map into the new opacity mask node. You can break the link with the specular map as well, since we're now using PBR texture maps instead. Then, just save the material. Once you do, you'll notice an immediate difference on our character's cloak. Nice and shiny. Next, we'll do the exact same thing with the eyelash texture maps, only the eyelash doesn't have an AO map because it doesn't really need one to be honest. The important thing is to make sure your material blend mode is set to masked and everything should fall in place from there. The same thing goes for the fingernail textures and so on and so forth. Essentially you want to select the AO, metallic and roughness maps for each mesh. 
disable the sRGB options first, and then save. Then you want to open the material for that mesh and import in those PBR textures, making sure that you set your material blend mode to masked. From there, just pipe in the texture maps into their respective nodes. This may take a while, depending on how many material meshes your character has. Once we're done all that, let's load up the skeletal mesh one more time. You'll see right off the bat that the character looks a lot better than before with the new PBR textures. Animations and everything else remain the same as well. Finally, we can play in game mode. You can see the beautiful detail in the materials as our hero makes his way around the stage. So, by using the new Converting Bone Structure for UE4 Rig Procedure in Character Creator 2.0, users can now easily import all character assets into the Unreal Game Engine and save huge time and effort on bone mapping, renaming, and axis alignment. That's about it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching, and make sure you check out our other Character Creator 2.0 tutorials on our YouTube channel.